This is the first set of notes for the meteorology unit, and these are about the atmosphere. If you take a look at your set of notes, they're very, very long, but I'm splitting that one set of notes into halves. Um, so we're today going to get through all about the atmosphere, and then at the point where it says solar energy, and pass that to the greenhouse effect, and then the back side of the notes, that's your next homework video. The layers of the atmosphere are divided into four main layers according to the difference in their temperature structure. The layers are introduced in the notes from the lowest to the highest altitude. So as soon as you walk outside, that's the lowest one. That's what we're going to start with. The troposphere is the layer that's closest to the Earth's surface. It extends up about 20 kilometers or about 12 miles. All of the weather changes occur here. So if you think when you go outside, if it's raining, sleeting, hailing, whatever, all of that is happening right up against the Earth. And that's in the troposphere. Temperature decreases as altitude increases. So if you think about when you go up, um, when you're flying, it gets colder. The upper boundary is called the tropopause. Pause, like when you're watching a video and you stop it. Uh, so the top of it is called the tropopause. The stratosphere extends from 20 kilometers to 50 kilometers. And then the temperature is going to increase as the altitude increases. So that's the opposite of what just happened in the troposphere. And the ozone layer is here in the stratosphere. And then once you get high enough up in that plane, this is where the planes fly in the stratosphere. Horizontal winds are very strong in this layer. They can go up to 200 miles per hour, which is where the jet stream comes in. Um, if you watch the weatherman, sometimes he talks about the jet stream. And then the upper boundary here is the stratopause. Um, again, just like when you're watching a movie and you pause it, it's like a little break. So this is the break between the two layers. The mesosphere. Meso meaning middle. So we're here in the middle of all of the atmosphere layers. And that extends from 50 kilometers to 80 kilometers, which is about 50 miles. And the temperature decreases as altitude increases. So this is back the same as what the troposphere, troposphere is. The coldest layer at negative 100 degrees Celsius. And then the upper boundary of this layer is called the mesopause. Just like all of the other layers, the top of the boundary is whatever the name of the layer is, plus pause. So this one is the mesopause. The thermosphere extends from 80 kilometers up to space. The temperature is going to increase as altitude increases, the same as what was with the stratosphere. The air is very thin here because we're getting further and further away from the Earth. So the atmosphere is getting thinner. Therefore, the air is thinner. And then the thermosphere has two separate regions. The one that's closer to the surface of the Earth is called the ionosphere. And then the one that's out up against space is called the exosphere. Exo, like you're exiting. So it's the last outermost layer of the Earth. The ionosphere extends from 80 kilometers to 550 kilometers, and it captures and transfers radio waves. Um, so when you're listening to the radio in the car, the radio waves that you're getting come from here. And then the exosphere extends from 550 kilometers out to space. And this is the zone of indefinite altitude because there's no necessary area where our atmosphere stops and space starts. Now we're going to talk about how we got our atmosphere. Why do you think it's necessary for astronauts to wear special suits when they enter space? Take a look at that guy up in the corner. Why has he got to wear his suit? Uh, maybe it has to do with so he doesn't fly away um, and more specifically so he's got air to breathe. And then here on the notes, the origin of Earth's atmosphere 
four billion years ago, remember BYA is billion years ago, the atmosphere contained two deadly gases, methane and ammonia, as well as some water vapor. So what do you think Earth was like four billion years ago? If you watched how the Earth was made with me first semester, think about way, way far back. And also remember that the Earth is only 4.5 billion years old. 3.8 billion years ago, sunlight triggers a chemical reaction where nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide formed from the reaction. The hydrogen escapes back into space, leaving the nitrogen, the carbon dioxide, and the water behind. Sunlight continues to break down the water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen escapes into space, and the oxygen combines to form what's called ozone. And ozone is O3. So instead of just having two oxygen molecules to form what we call is the breathing oxygen, and you have three of the oxygens come together to form the ozone layer. And then over time, ozone forms a blanket around the Earth and we call the blanket the atmosphere because just the ozone layer by itself is part of the atmosphere and then the whole rest of the atmosphere built off of the ozone layer. What does the ozone layer do for us? It absorbs UV rays. It's very important for you to know that the ozone layer absorbs the UV rays. It does not reflect them. It absorbs them. Because of ozone layers, microorganisms start to develop. The microorganisms photosynthesize. Think about biology, photosynthesis. You're making your own food. Adding oxygen into the atmosphere. You know, plants give off oxygen. So then the green plants were thriving and the oxygen content is growing. About 600 million years ago, oxygen levels and carbon dioxide levels equal out and have remained fairly constant throughout history. So here's the break in the notes. You're good here. I'm going to pick up the second video talking about solar energy.